to the continuum limit. Moreover, <coughs> if we define the function u of s to be the convolution of this f <coughs> with this kernel and add some constant c, we can do that, <coughs> then the maximizer in fact satisfies this equation. The prescribed Gauss curvature equation with prescribed Gauss curvature k. <coughs> That's the connection between differential geometry and Onsager's point. What is this? Why Onsager? Well, Onsager was the first to put to look into this kind of thing. This is the Hamiltonian of Mr. Kirchhoff from the 19th century, and the Q can be considered as position of vortices. I gave them already some uh, uh, circulation uh, one here. Well, there is one difference. I'm a little bit cheating. For vortices, it has to be minus this, but it doesn't matter uh, for what I'm doing. And uh, so Onsaga proposed in the 1940s that one should actually do statistical mechanics for this point vortices, uh, look at the continuum distributions, and that should predict what fluids are doing. And he said, OK, if they have lots of energy, they should form vortex clumps. No? I think we call them hurricanes. <laughs> All right. So, but this, uh, I mean, this is a theorem that uh, was proved by a couple of pre people. I'm one of them. And uh, so that Buncha uh, Nilo uh, collaborated with me on that particular one. And, but uh, then Alice Chang from Princeton, who is a differential geometer. Oh. Oh, what? Is it? Then you probably need to. I need to click on something. Huh? Yeah. But where do I click? Put a view and post Oh, ah, yeah. There we go. I clicked. Thank you. So when Alice learned about these results, then she raised the following question. Now basically she said, look, in differential geometry, we are also interested in sign changing Gauss curvatures. Okay. Can you do what you did also then? Well, <laughs> I thought about that. And when you go through the proof, it's completely clear what you have to do in principle. You have to replace the measure dq by a sign measure. But then anything I know about proving these limits is out of the window because everything is based on the typical features of entropy, which is uh, the right normalization, positivity or minus sign negativity, convexity, subadditivity, all that is out of the window. There is no maximum entropy principle, right? So, oops, I didn't even know whether that is possibly Nevertheless, too, that such a continuum limit would exist. But physically, it doesn't make sense. It's yeah, right. what, what is a sign ensemble yeah. measure, right? I mean, <laughs> I know what is a probability measure that gives me an ensemble measure, but what is a sign ensemble, right? But mathematically, so, it makes sense. Mathematically, you can define this in a measure theoretical sense. And it's also clear because of having a sign a priori measure that if there are critical points, there will be centered points. There will not, will not be such a thing like a minimum or maximum entropy principle. It must be critical points only. And uh, so yeah, I tried hard and uh, couldn't make any progress. And what do you do when you can't make progress? You simplify, right? And see whether it is actually possibly true. So what I did is I reduced the dimension from positions in two dimension to positions in one dimension. Instead of the logarithmic interaction, I took a quadratic interaction. And in addition, this k, of course, had to become now sign changing. It was now the product of a quadratic times a Gaussian. So that's still like a Schwarz function. Right? It is a Schwarz function. And, and now, basically, the whole thing becomes a story. In random polynomials, <coughs> here it is. Right? So now you look at such expressions. <coughs> so the E's you see there. Right, these guys, these are expected values of these polynomials. Right, C is a complex variable, and uh, the expected values are being taken with respect to n normal and random variables. They are multivariate and they are not independent. And uh, the covariance is this. But if sigma square, there's only one parameter, which is a variance. Sigma square is 1, then they become IRD standard norm. Right, and then everything can be done. And uh, <coughs> so, but uh, uh, these integrals you can evaluate with Maple, but Maple gets some 
toothache when n is 11 or 12, but uh, that was already good enough to check. And uh, the nice thing is uh, with this model is that by just formally pretending you could take the continuum limit, you get a variational principle like the Boltzmann uh, maximum entropy principle, and uh, that I know how to prove when you have a real a priori measure. And, uh, but here it would be now just giving you possibly critical points, so you do the Euler-Lagrange equation and you can solve them completely, and so you know if the limit exists, what the answer should be when n goes to infinity. Uh, so maybe we compute this integral. Yes, and here this is what comes out when you send your paper to a referee who is smarter than you. <laughs> well, I wrote in the paper that uh, since I'm not an expert really in all the tricks with multi, very normal random variables. Oh, so you have a closed form. That's a closed form expression. Mm -hmm. Maybe I said experts in multivariate normal random variables will know how to do this. And the referee wrote back then uh, in the report, that's a strange remark. It's so easy to do that. Now, yeah, thank you when you are <laughs> knowing all these tricks. So he uh, uh, explained how you can do this. And uh, so that's a closed formula expression. And that, of course, uh, well, it didn't, it made now possible to make n pretty large and plot, but what I plotted with 12 random variables already was pretty close to the suspected limit. And I'm going to show you a number of curves now. So this is the polynomial? So in x is equal to that's, a, that's so right. So this is finite sum up to, no? so these are the coefficients of the power 2j. No? And that itself is a polynomial in z. Polynomial in two powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in sigma and in z. That's right. And of course, I wrote it with this. Uh, uh, this, of course, is just sigma square minus 1 over n, but this is choose, right? And I wanted to write it in this combinatorial way. If you write it with factorials, then uh, there are some cancellations also. Then. So, here's just a picture. Uh, that was a lot of uh, formalism. Uh, here, if you take just three random variables of that kind, so you see what type of uh, ensemble this is. Uh, <coughs> so sigma is uh, bigger than one on the left, so that is the prolate regime, and uh, sigma between zero and one is the oplate regime. Sigma equals one is IID standard normal, and it's a, a ball here, so these are the level surfaces. And you see that, uh, well, here's a x1 random variable, x2, and x3, and so this is exactly, the axis here is uh, uh, the sample mean, if you want, right? So, so I could rotate and make them all independent, but then I mess up the product in the a priori measure, so there is no free lunch here, right? So it's not factor, the integral doesn't factor. But still one can hang it through. But, okay, so here now, from now on, are lots of curves, right? This is what I can prove completely, because here I'm in the regime where uh, you know, there's a z, the complex variable. If I choose z to be real, then I have a measure, not a signed measure. And then I can roll up the sleeves and prove that the uh, limit as n goes to infinity exists and gives you the usual maximum entropy principle, a la Boltzmann, that I had shown earlier with interactions. And uh, so, uh, but here is now uh, sigma equals one half, so that is the oplate regime. What I'm doing here is, Unfortunately, one cannot see this very well. I take this expected value and take the power of 1 over n. Right? If I would have taken the log, and it is 1 over n in the logarithm. So it's basically the exponential of an, of an entropy per particle that I'm looking at. And n is 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 all the way to 12. Unfortunately, it doesn't come out very well. If you look closely, if you stand here, it's easy. You see there is this bluish haze, light bluish haze. These are all the curves from here. <laughs> and the dark blue curve is what I get from that variational principle by proving it, <laughs> right? So you see they come from below and approximated with 12 random variables already very well. When sigma is 0.5, that's a top late regime. Interesting is this. If I go into the prolate regime, okay, sigma is now two, that's this uh, cigar. Then there's a phase transition, right? Here is, what I'm plotting here is z, of course. That's, uh, you know, sigma is fixed, z is plotted, and again you see the expected value to the power one over n, 
and for n equals blah blah blah. So now the blue haze is above, so it converges down. And uh, but here and here something interesting happens because this is not analytic here. This is actually an intersection of two real analytic curves, and it, it picks the larger one. It's the maximum entropy principle. Huh? So this is all rigorously shown, and therefore it's still under the title some random polynomials. Now the title changes. <laughs> now it becomes more appropriate experimental math, because I cannot prove anything of this, what you see now. Uh, <clears throat> namely, now I have made z, the complex variable, to be i, y, y real. Now I'm really on the imaginary axis, and now I have assigned real a priori measure there, and that's why I cannot prove any limit as n goes to infinity anymore. I don't know how to do this. Even though, of course, for this particular model, having an explicit formula, now, this can be presumably now pushed through based on the fact that you have an explicit evaluation. But I want something more general, right? I want to answer the question of Alice Chen for vortices and differential geometry. So, uh, now, so you should not rely on an explicit representation for a special model. This is for me for testing. Does it make sense? And the answer is yes. But for this particular E sub n of z sigma, then you can prove it? I cannot prove any of this here. I don't know. I can only but then it's very explicit. We have this polynomial. Yeah, I just said, if I roll up the sleeves, given that I have an explicit formula, I can presumably do it from there. But what I'm looking at is a more general argument that doesn't rely on such an explicit oh. formalization. For me, this is enough to check empirically that my ideas make sense, that it's not uh, completely Google, right? So unfortunately, again, this light blue haze is uh, online always nice, but here in the beam not. So there is a blue haze here, here also, right? And you see black and red curves. So what you see is, in fact, now for the odd n, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Uh, so it's only the odds. Uh, the expected value of i, y, when sigma is square root of 3 half, and then to the power 1 over n, for these n values, that makes the blue haze. And there are two curves, black and red. They come from different solutions of the uh, euler lagrange equations. And uh, so there is a jump. Huh? So this curve here is disconnected from the black one here. And But the light blue haze, in fact, is approximating this very rapidly. Here it swings up and follows the red curves and comes down again there. Huh? So uh, there is little doubt that this is literally converging if you push on. Uh, this here is the same story for the even n. This is gone, now something comes down here and suddenly hits a kink and then follows the red curve and goes up again. And uh, now 2, 4, 6 and so on. Uh, sigma is still square root of 3 half. <coughs> okay, let's go on. How about I make sigma 1.15? I'm still plotting now <laughs> this expected value to the power 1 over n versus y here. No, so it's obvious, right? Even and odd gives you different. So even and odd is always different. This is again odd now. The even will always be positive. That much I was able to prove. <laughs> and the odd can be positive or negative. No? But it also means it's already different from the previous situation. The real case is real conversion in n. Here you have to look at the even n and odd n subsequences separately. You cannot expect convergence uh, for n, no? but you can expect convergence for the even n subsequence and for the odd n subsequence. And uh, but the difference is black, red, black, red, black. Before it was all red and all black below. Now it's black, red, black. Something has changed already. And here is now the same thing for the even ends. Now again, the low part has disappeared, but something has mapped up. So here's again the blue haze is approximating this very quickly. Here's a blue haze around, now and then it goes up again. But again, black, red, black. Now I change sigma again. Ooh, now the red is on the shoulders. This looks like a like a samurai. <laughs> so black, red, jump up, black. And here's a blue haze again below, then goes up, blue haze below, 
coming down blue haze below. And here is sigma is 1 over square root of 2, so it's an oblate regime now. And here's the even numbers. So what was below is actually reflected up at the y-axis. And here is how it is constructed. These are all the curves I get from the variational principle in the hypothetical continuum limit. That means if I take just faithfully, uh, or hopefully the formal limit n to infinity, don't put any epsilons and deltas anywhere, uh, you get uh, a nonlinear variational principle. And uh, so you, what you see here is basically the curve negative 1 plus y square and 1 minus y square. These are these two curves. So they are reflections with respect to each other. Uh, then you see these reddish curves here, which are <coughs> computed with certain solutions of the variational principle. Then there are other reddish curves computed with other solutions of the variational principle. And anything which is in light color, these are the continuations here, they never show up as a limit empirically. Only the, 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 uh, the colors you can see show up. And in fact, what happens? depending on what sigma is, you may come down here when n is even, uh, reach this point and then you swing all the way over to here and then you go back up again when you vary y in this direction. Or you may start here on the blue curve until you reach, let's say, this reddish point. You follow now the reddish curve, you jump up to here, follow the blue curve, jump back down to the same continuation and then follow this, reach the blue curve and follow the blue curve again. Uh, depending on what sigma is, uh, all interesting things can go on. So I, I didn't put that on the slide, but in my paper that I give you the reference at the end, uh, there is a two-page statement about what the conjectured limits are depending on what the sigma and the at odd n or even n sequences are. So one can make that very precise and presumably prove it with a particular representation that one has here, but I want something more general. But it cannot be based on convex analysis. That's all we you know. So, I, but this formula for each of n that they forget found, did you use this for this? Hmm? Did this formula, yeah. the closed form? Yes. That's so what I said. Did you use this formula or use the integral? So to no, I used it to, for the. This is uh, coming from the variational principle yeah. in the limit. That's not this formula. Oh, okay. Um, this is what comes out by so assuming... So you can only go as far as 11 or 12? You cannot the, the, go more? No, I have used this formula to plot, but you don't see it here. I have to go back to the previous, for instance. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. You see this light... So you can only go as far as 12? This light blue haze. This yeah. is plotted with a closed formula. So and you can you go to 1,000 if you want. You can go, yeah. But what I plotted here is really only up to 12 because you are already... But you, oh, it's close enough. It's close enough optically. But you could go go as far. I, I did that with up to 1,000 yeah. from the closed formula. And uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. right smack on the curve. But I didn't sit down to use the closed formula to prove in these various parameter cases that really you converge to this. I'm pretty sure you can do that. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, it will make rigorous this part without telling me anything oh, about so you how can to do it, but you don't want to do it because it's yeah, other things. Well, you can give it to a student to uh, practice this in real analysis and complex analysis, but I, I'm looking for a way to get the hand on the more complicated systems that are not of the type that you can hack it through for finite n explicitly. So this is really a test case to get an idea. So here's now also some uh, experimental work when I vary sigma for fixed values of, of y. So here, uh, square root of 2, my z is i times square root of 2, and here I'm varying sigma, and you see also the blue haze is above here, cuts down, and then goes above again, but indeed follows closer and closer this red, black, and then red again. The red, black, red, red is from the euler lagrange equations of the putative limit. And here is the same for the odd ends, so that was just the even ends. So for the odd ends, you come from here, jump down, uh, so the blue haze is like a waterfall coming down, following this, cutting through and following then this reddish curve. But this is really strictly flat here. Uh, 
so on. All right, so further reading. Here's my paper. Here's the full title. No? Yeah. <laughs> it was published in 2017, last year, in Journal of Statistical Physics. And otherwise, yeah, thanks for listening. So I, yeah, I wonder if Mendel can find the limits of the E sub n for this. I know you, you don't find it interesting, but it could be an interesting exercise. Sure. That would be... Uh, so you have some conjecture about the limits? Yeah, yeah. So no, all the, the, the red and black curves you saw, they are all computed with an explicit limit function. They are uh, completely explicit. I can... And they they are limit are proved or conjecture? Hmm? The limit functions are proved? No, the limit, yeah, except the limit hasn't been proved. The functions are all solutions to this variation of principle you get by pretending that uh, you get the same structure, mathematical structure, as you get when you work with measures instead of sign measures. Yeah. Right? So it's a nonlinear set of uh, fixed point equations. And uh, so the, uh, the interesting thing is uh, that you actually, even though you work with uh, uh, signed measures, a priori measures, the solutions you have to take into account may be complex. So you take the linear combination, the real part of, of two complex uh, solutions, and uh, then you get a sign changing uh, measure coming out of that. And that is how I produce these black and reddish curves that get better and better approximated when I uh, evaluate the E sub n's with larger and larger n. Right, so that gets closer and closer. And the closed formula, yeah, maybe one can ask Maple to prove this, but there are many subcases. No, it it's, uh, would be a lot of work to look at each and every one because there are so many phase transitions going on. But uh, uh, so there's no doubt in my mind that this can be generalized even if you do not have these explicit representations and that the answer to Alice Chang's question is yes. I just don't know how to prove this. But I, I, I was curious. So at this time, question is very interesting mathematically, but physically, it's no physicist. Uh, why would they want they to? Have no meaning physically. No, not not from from that perspective. It's still got accepted and targets in the statistical physics. <laughs> That's right, but uh, because uh, it's of course. The technique is interesting. Yeah, I could have uh, sent it to experimental math, maybe, right? <laughs> but uh, there is, of course, some part of physics. And I told you early on, yeah, when I went to Z being real, that's, of course, a measure that physicists can uh, interpret, right? And uh, but in Journal of Statistical Physics, you do not just have physics in there. No? There's uh, also mathematical biology, and uh, there's some uh, say pure, almost pure math part, probabilistically, in there. So that's quite a variety. Thanks again.